Hello, welcome to our channel. This is a place of enlightenment where we will nurture, teach, and empower you to walk right and make the right decisions by giving you revelational knowledge and what you need to know to make your life work. All right, today I have something exciting, interesting to talk about. I'm sincerely sure, I'm seriously sure it's going to bless you. All right, uh, since I was a child, I've heard that phrase that uh, love is blind. What does it mean? What, what, what are they talking about? What do they mean when they say that? Is love really blind? You're going to get that today. We're going to discover what it entails and what it means. Uh, before I go on, I'd like you to subscribe to this channel. Alright, this is your first time. Subscribe to this channel. I also click the notification bell let, so that you get to know anytime we're uploading new stuff and new information, new messages that will bless you and transform you. Alright, uh, do me another favor. Share this with your friend uh, because this truly well bless you all right when they say love is blind what do they mean listen that word love is blind was first used that phrase was first used in 1405 by geoffrey chanza in his book um merchant's tale and um, that's the first time he used that word and um, although it was made popular in the 15th century 16th century by shakespeare who constantly and consistently use that word, all right? So that's the beginning, that's the foundation of that word. But when we look at, when we talk about love, it's essential for you and I to fully understand what does the scripture say, because you know, everything I talk about, I like to put a foundation from scriptures to it. Uh, and so, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse seven, the message translation says, love puts up with anything, trust God always, always look for the best, never looks back, what keeps going to the head that means love put up with anything anything false negativity trust god always is looking for the best in others it doesn't see fault you see what does that idiom love is blind what does it mean all right but one it means that people are unable or unwilling to see the fault in those whom they are in love with right so you are in love with somebody you're already chatting with somebody you fall in love with somebody you refuse uh, to see uh, anything they have that is wrong. In fact, when people tell you, ah, do you know that that guy uh, has anger issues? You see, you laugh, he smiles. You say, no, 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 no. He just loves to express himself passionately. You know, you refuse to see the fault. Number two, a person in love cannot see the imperfection in the persons they love. That's the second meaning of that word, love is blind. It means that you can't see the imperfection. So for you, what you see and all that you see is somebody who is perfect. Uh, another thing, number three, is that if you love someone, it does not matter what they look like or what their faults are. It doesn't matter. You just overlook it. And uh, that's what people say when they, when they say love is blind. They mean that you can't see the faults. They mean that you overlook the faults in others. They mean that you do not see the inadequacies. As far as you can see and as far as you are concerned, that person is perfect. And that's all that matters to you because, of course, like they say, love is blind listen and let me proceed here research done in uh, 2004 uh, by the university college london actually proved and showed that um, the feelings of love actually suppress the area of the brain that controls our logical thinking right um that, that, that's a research work that when somebody is in love something happens to his brain uh it suppresses that area of the brain that actually helps in logical thinking so that love it appears that love and logical thinking are not in sync so that when somebody is in love is not in sync so why do we say love is blind and all of that somebody actually agree with that also uh, a neuroscientist actually said that the brain becomes illogical in the throes of new romance the brain becomes logical illogical in the throes of new romance so when somebody is in love newly uh, a part of the brain is actually suspended unfortunately the part that is suspended is actually that part that does logical processing logical thinking and reasoning and so when we say love is blind we're actually talking about the impassivable flaws in your partner and other person now let me say this and this is very key this is where i'm actually going and this will drive this home for you so that you understand it when people say love is blind it's because when actually you fall in love uh, uh, you actually fall in love with your heart uh, or you are in love with your heart especially when the romance is new some folks say we should not say we are fall in love as believers that we're supposed to walk in love all right if you are walking in what is called eros love which is feeling love um one area of your of your form area that that's that that love speaks to is your heart right uh understand that, that it's your heart your heart is the place of your emotion 
Uh, and then the other part of love, which is the second part of love, is that the second part of love is from your mind. But when people are in love newly, the part that speaks mostly is their heart, right? So that they are very emotional. It's all about what they feel. It's all about how the person makes them feel. It's all about what happens to them, the chemicals that flows in them when they are with that person. They are only always thinking about uh, how they can make the person happy, how can they can make the person fulfill their dreams. Uh, and they are never thinking about logic. They are never thinking about can this relationship work? How can they work on the long term? Uh, can the flaws of this person, will the flaws of this person not hinder my progress in my career, uh, my goals, my ambition? They are not thinking of all of that. Other people from the outside can see it, but they cannot see it. The problem is that um, uh, love is in two areas. The first one is in your heart, like I said, and the other one is in your mind. When love is only of the heart, love is fully and wholly blind. When love is only of the heart, uh, love is fully and only blind. When people say follow your heart, I tell people don't because it is dangerous uh, to follow your heart while you suspend your sense and your reasoning. Understand that longer lasting love relationship actually has the mixture of the heart and the mind. Uh, if you are going to have true love that lasts, uh, the love that other people see, and they, they appreciate the, a love you don't regret. Uh, this is not just lost. Uh, then it has to be a mixture of both your heart and your mind. It's not just going to be what you feel. It's also going to be very sensible. It's going to be very reasonable to you. All right. Can I give you certain keys and pointers to let you know whether what you are in right now is blind love or whether you are just blind in love? Number one. There is an unhealthy distance uh, from your family and your friends. It is normal and it often happens in relationships, especially at the start, that you begin to re uh, reorder your scheduling and your priorities uh, in order to apportion more time and spend more time to the person you are in love with. Uh, and this, this is normal. But when, they now, when it now begins to affect the relationship that you have, uh, uh, with your family members but however as things stabilizes as things get better it's expected that when stability comes uh, you then reorder your part even with your loved ones and your family now i've had relationships and i've had people who are in relationships uh who when i say i've had it doesn't mean me i mean i've had of relationships where people are in those relationships uh, the, the, the other partner kind of just drive an edge, uh, a wedge between them and their family, within them and their loved ones. So that somebody you've known from your child, somebody you've known from childhood, they begin to say, leave them alone. I don't want you talking to them. Even though there is no reason to do that, sir, then you need to be careful. Without the presence and the voice of trusted people surrounding you, then you are bound to make mistakes. You are bound to make error even in your relationship. Be careful of partners uh, that tries to drive wedge around people who have been there for you all of your life. When you make decisions like that, they are irrational. Uh, it means that love is blind. That's what you are operating in. Number two, when you become people pleasing, when you love intoxicates you to the point that you act outside of character even in your relationship so that you become an hypocrite uh, that word hypocrite don't count it as something that is so hard and strange it just means somebody who is a play actor who, who play acts who act a role so that in that relationship you are no longer yourself um, in that relationship you are no longer yourself you do the things you really don't want to do uh, but because the person loves those things you keep doing them uh, even the things you would never accept you begin to accept them uh, in order to just please the other party. This is a pattern that can lead to unrealistic expectation in your relationship. And this can backfire. It can really backfire. So you must be very careful uh, so that you are not pretending. There must not be pretense in love. Love abhors hypocrisy. That's what scripture says. And so we must live with those truths. That's a truth we must live by. Number three, when you make major decisions too early, the excitement of relationship can make new uh, couples or partners to make major decisions very soon. Uh, you hear people say, uh, let, let's have sexual compatibility. Let's know whether we are sexually compatible since we talk a lot. Or we already know we are emotionally compatible. Let's know whether we are sexually compatible. And, and all of these things leads to saying, we, we need to really, really be careful uh, what we do and the kind of major decisions we make. Uh, don't pull out of school. I mean, don't choose a course or in school because somebody you love is there. 
don't make major decisions at an early stage um, don't begin to talk about relocating for love, uh, merging back accounts, uh, buying pets and uh, raising pets together, cohabitating uh, before appropriate commitment is in place. And I tell people as Christians, the commitment is to put the ring on it. If he's not married you, then there is no commitment. There are certain things you should not do. You shouldn't do. Uh, like making decisions to take him home, introduce him or her to your parents, to your family. If, if just be careful. Be careful because when you take them home and then you come again and say you, you are no longer doing, which is possible, uh, then you they begin to say, how many will you bring home for us? Uh, you need to really, really be careful. Don't make big decisions early. How do I know, uh, number four, that people are not working in love as they ought to? They overlook the red flags in people's past. You can't do that. You shouldn't do that. You, you, when you start hearing yourself saying it's not a big deal, uh, you know, it was a long time ago. Uh, he used to be like that. You know, you just give him reasons. He has changed. He has changed. Without any evidence, practically, concrete evidence, to suggest that that person has changed, you're just going on blindly in love. This person is a serial fornicator. This person has been this... I mean, you are like the 10th relationship. Or he, he has always not made a commitment. And you know, what makes you think your case will be different? What? Oh, it's not prayer. If the person does not change, uh, you can change people. You see, you have to understand these things. Uh, love, don't love people and make commitments while overlooking the red flags. If they say they have changed, you need to wait for proofs. And proofs take time. You cannot prove a thing until you let time go over it. Uh, so don't be quick uh, to make certain decisions. Don't dismiss their past. Uh, because except you can see evidence that they have changed if somebody just left a relationship a week ago and is already eating on you then you should be asking yourself is he not eating on somebody else these are things you need to ask yourself you must be heads up look for patterns in behavior that are contradictory to what they are saying look for patterns that are evil patterns that are wicked evil patterns like being serial fornicators like um, like they are like the way they undo money what's their financial discretion what's their moral discretion you know you have to look for consistency many people many of us don't don't see consistency i mean it's easy to know who to marry or who not to marry look for consistency don't just date and just fall in love and just forget your brain and there is the consistency you find in this person is that they don't keep their words, they don't have fidelity, they don't they don't have any 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 standard of living, they don't they don't believe in God, they don't submit to anybody, they don't they are not submitted to anyone, they just make decisions the way they want to make it, they live their life the way they want to live it. That's dangerous. And then this number five, love is blind. And in fact, when you hear people say love is blind because of this number five, it is excusing bad behavior. There is no good reason to allow obvious bad behavior to go unchecked in a relationship. Love blind people are suckers for being taken advantage of by bad behavior. People who are just badly behaved is disgracing you outside, the way he speaks to you outside. And instead of you thinking that he's at fault, you are thinking that it was the way you acted. Oh, of course, you didn't act well, but that's not the way love should have responded. The way he responded is not the way he should have responded. You, you overlook bad behavior. The fact that he does not have savings, the fact that he just spent money anyhow. I mean, I was talking to a lady. He said, you know, hey, my husband, the problem is he's is, is bomb bomb. When he see buttocks like this, you can follow it anyway. Hello, are you crazy? Are we going to, are, are everybody, all the ladies that have the backside, are they going to leave the world? They are always going to be there. If he doesn't have discipline, then what are you doing with him? It's going to end in crying. It's going to end in tears. So you need, you need to be careful what you do. I'm concerned, and you should be concerned about deep character flaws. You should be very concerned about ongoing disrespect, critical spirit, profanity, the way he talks. He can talk to anybody anyhow. Lack of honor, lack of respect for anybody. No one can talk to him. No one can control him. And you want to submit your life to that kind of madness, pornography, and sexual addiction. These are things you need to watch out for. Substance abuse. The guy is actually abusing substances. He's, he's always on codeine, always on weed. And you think it's fine because right now you are in love. Lelo, you've got to open your head. You have to allow reasoning to come in. He's a serial liar. He lies every time. 
it's a serial uh, abuse abuser. He abuses you. He abuses people sexually, physically, morally, emotionally. And yet you you say I'm going to stay there. Ah, you say, and then your friends are telling you love is blind. Love is hello. You have to be careful. You have to be careful. Don't throw caution to the wind. Don't just be interested in pleasing your partner and making them happy without looking for your own happiness. Don't take unfounded risk in a relationship. If this person, there's no proof he has changed, then don't risk your life. Don't risk your future, your purpose, your goals, your ambition. Don't risk it because of a man or a woman. Don't let your experience, your heightened form of state of attraction, don't let it deceive you. Don't say no to red flags. Watch it. Pray about it. Seek godly counsel. Very important. Listen, love is blind. And it is most times. I mean, if you have ever seen somebody in a lasting relationship, it's because they are actually fulfilling that word, love is blind. Let me say this to you. Love is actually blind. In many areas of love, love is blind. And that's the truth blind to weaknesses blind and making excuses for weaknesses for things that the other person cannot uh, cannot do uh, obvious faults obvious flaws you make excuses for them but listen there are levels to excuses and flaws you should take verbal abuse sexual abuse all manner of abuse are not part of them uh understand that but if you see anybody in a last relationship maybe in marriage in their home in their relationship it's because they have learned how to forgive how to let go and how to not consider the flaws you will never find someone who is only perfect but you must be able to ask yourself uh, what can i not do without is this not a risk going ahead true love cannot remain in the art alone it must also be of the mind that that's that's all i'm saying to you today that true love cannot be of the art alone True love must also be of the mind. Once your head takes over, you start to become aware of certain traits. Once your head takes over, you start to see things that you did not see before. But you can also not let your head alone lead you. Why? Because your head is just only rational, logical, and has no place for emotion. And that's wrong. So therefore, there must be a mixture. There must be a balance of the head and of the heart. You must accept these things. This is the truth. Uh, when love is of the air, it starts to become more rational. It thinks through the process. And that is very important. Oh, so this guy says he's going to marry you. And he's only in 200 level. He doesn't even know what he's going to do with his life. Now, if you let your feeling lead you, you are going to believe that. But if you let your head also come in, he's going to ask you, I'm, 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 I'm graduating. This guy is just in 200 level. I'm, I'm, I'm already a graduate. What's going to happen? How is he going to work? Listen, there needs to be a balance of both. And then when Ed comes in also, the flaws and the weaknesses are no longer cute. Right? So you begin to say to yourself, wow, this, I'm, I'm not sure I can deal with this. I'm not sure I can deal with this. I'm not sure I can deal with this. You also think about your values and your vision. You are not only being led of your feeling, you are also now being led of your mind. You're asking yourself, what are my values? What does this guy believe in? Is there, is there a point of alignment in our vision, in our dreams? Don't marry people because they are six feet tall, they have six packs, they, they, they look good, they talk good. Uh, you also have to ask yourself, have to ask yourself, where are they going? What's their pursuit in life? Are you guys going in a similar direction? Are your ways the same? Because listen, if you don't ask this question now, you are going to regret it in marriage. You are going to start, you are, when you start standing up in marriage, it's going to tell you you have changed. She's going to tell you you have changed. So you've got to ask those questions. You're going to let your mind come in even from now. And then you also begin to think about your faith. Is there a point of alignment between our faith? You know, when folks tell me, uh, you know, he's not a believer, uh, but I love him. That, that's the, they are letting their heart lead them. You have to let your mind come into place. I start saying how much of a man is molded by his belief. If you ask yourself how much belief affects the molding of a man, you will not do it. Because it's more than he does not go to church. It's going to affect his value. It's going to affect his love life. A man who does not know God cannot love you the way Jesus expects you to be loved. And you are bigger and better than that. So, 
when you let your reasoning come in, it also increases how you value and how you see yourself. And then you become more principle driven. You are not just moved by shape, figures, uh, and height and halos and the sense of women or men you are principle driven there are kind there are people you are not really interested in talking to and then when you let your head lead you you also accept the humanity you understand that listen people have faults people have flaws people are not perfect and you are ready to accept their humanity listen there is a difference between accepting someone who has crazy abuse problem and accepting humanity beating uh, violence, verbal abuse, it talks you down. That's not humanity. That's not humanity. Humanity means that it's not perfect. That's different from wickedness, right? Uh, so for love to be true and lasting, there has to be a combination of the mind and the heart. Yes, emotional and rational commitment. Attraction and persuasion. Those two things are very key. You are attracted to the person, but you are also persuaded at the art level also you are emotionally connected to the person but you are also rationally connected to the person at the mind level unfortunately many people don't do that they only stay in the emotional side of love especially because that's what they see on social media that's what they see in movies i mean uh, you watch movies that are just maybe one hour 20 minutes uh, that are faces of people's life they are not just so true and then the guy meets a lady at a party and then they wear room together they just click uh, and then fast forward they are already sleeping with one another they are planning marriage the next week hello that's that that's that's a movie um your life is not a movie i mean that those guys who who acted those roles are gonna see you're gonna see them in another movie it tells you that the it's just it's just it's just hypocrisy it's just play acting right so and your life is not like that if you just commit to a man now i find it difficult uh, even to leave yes so what am i saying so all love has an element of blindness in it right all love if you look at your parents they have been in love for a while and there are things you feel your mom does that are wrong but your dad can't even see that tells you that all love has an element of blindness there are things that your mom does that are wrong and your dad can't see it hello so that just tells you that love must have an element of blindness if it's going to work you must allow your mind to sort through the maze and see whether what you are involved in can last or what you are involved in will last these are the things you must do if you must ask yourself what i'm involved in can it last will it last can it last and all of that comes from the place of reason so yes love is blind that's on the art level but with your mind you can reason things out you when god says we should find partners and when god said to um, male and female created them and all of that he was not expecting you to just make decisions from the place of emotion alone. You know? don't ever marry someone based on emotion you know? logically think through that process um, let your brain let it work let your mind uh, let it work uh, I tell folks that when we became born again, if we do not need your, our brain and we just need to live by the spirit alone, God would have taken away the brain the way we got born again. But he understands that many things in life are still going to be answered by sense and by wisdom. And that's what he has given you. Understand that. And if you are born again, then there's something called, Paul wrote about in 423 of Ephesians, called the renewing of the mind. So that the way your mind processes things are different from the way the mind of unbeliever process things so that you are already equipped to live the lawful life and to walk the love work the way God has ordained that it should be. Don't forget that the love of Christ is shed abroad in your heart and that your mind is also renewed if you stay in the word of God so that love may be blind and yes love is blind in certain areas but that with your mind and with your eyes you can build a love life that is strong, that is awesome and that is beautiful pray for you that your love life will work and you be an example even in this generation in the name of jesus amen thank you so much for listening i hope you've been blessed let me know your comments i write your comments interact with this uh, uh with this content I, I like to get feedback from you if you've been blessed by this the lord bless you share this with somebody like i said before and i'll see you again cheers thank you for listening this has been the living word if you have been blessed by this teaching or for counseling or any other inquiry kindly send us an email to pfa at the ransomed house.com or 
fisayoadeniyi at yahoo.com or please call 0912-772-3824. The Ransomed House, empowering people to live for Jesus.